thank you Aisha and Padmaja. Uh, Vishal, thanks for joining us. Uh, Rajan, thanks for joining us. I'll start with uh, Vishal because uh, everybody is talking about AI and chat GPT. So Vishal, uh, you know, my first question to you is, uh, you know, uh, I mean, there are two different views. Some people believe that uh, AI is going to, uh, I mean, the day before yesterday I was uh, reading, uh, watching a report on BBC and somebody made a statement that AI is capable of triggering an extension of human race. Uh, you have been working very closely in this space. Uh, can you just throw uh, some light uh, on these kind of statements? Uh, you know, um, the, the risk that AI has, so I was one of the signers of the original letter that was um, sent requesting a pause on the super large language models for a few months, just so everybody can catch up to them. Um, the risk here that I see is uh, not so much that these systems are somehow super intelligent and all that. The risk is that people can do dangerous things with them and they can do dangerous things with them very, very quickly. Uh, and at a very large scale, it is an, uh, an unprecedented scale at which damage can happen. So this is the risk uh, that we see. And I think we need to uh, keep that separate from an assessment of whether these systems are intelligent or not. Right. But uh, Vishal, it's, it's such an unknown territory that, you know, everybody is uh, trying to uh, figure out different parts of an unknown animal. So uh, I have Rajan also sitting here with me and they obviously uh, operate one of the largest uh, telecom companies in the world. And, and are at the forefront of uh, 5G revolution in India uh, and uh, many other countries. Rajan, uh, you know, there is so much discussion about AI and, uh, I mean, it started with 5G, then went on to uh, metaverse and now <laughs> AI. What is your take as a key stakeholder in this industry? You know, as Vishal has rightly pointed out, it is early days, but we have to be very watchful we have seen the disruption technology brings around the world, around the globe. Social media itself, you will see, has done a lot of stuff that probably was not even thought about. So we'll have to have some, you know, red lines drawn when the AI is spoken about. And the experts are actually engaged now with the stakeholders, with the governments of the day. If you see, uh, if you must have read the last week, EU and all the AI supposedly people who are now putting the benchmark on AI are in discussion. What are the red lines for this AI to be coming? It has its own disruption that will happen. Will it be something which is into control as all the regulations do? And we see in every technology, regulations are must. Anything which is unregulated will bring huge disruption negatively as well, positively as well. India has its own space. Technology India is actually now leapfrogging. So we should not shy away. We should adopt, but we should be watchful. Uh, Vishal, I have a follow-up question for you. Uh, you know, one is uh, the desire uh, to regulate AI <coughs> and its application. Uh, but the, I think the fundamental question is, can it be regulated? Uh, what is your take? Oh, absolutely. It can be regulated. We have regulated nuclear technology before. We regulate dangerous chemicals. We have regulated very dangerous technologies very successfully. Uh, and same thing, it's, it's a tool that we have built. Um, it is easy and it is possible to regulate this, and we must. Um, many countries are now working on this. Our government in India is working on it. Um, so, yeah, and, and the regulation is absolutely necessary, just like we regulate um, as I'm speaking to you, I'm sitting in a 45-story tall building. Uh, you know, this building is not going to fall down or the builders don't say there is a 30% chance that this building could just crumble. Uh, it doesn't work like that. Uh, we need to be able to build responsible technologies, trustworthy technologies out of these, these basic tools. And uh, uh, the, the fundamental issue that I see is an issue of education. Um, right now, there are far too few people who understand these technologies. Um, if I give you some statistics on that, yeah. the, my wife, uh, Vandana, is on the board of uh, Code.org, which is a nonprofit that brings coding, computer science to, to people, to kids and, and all that. And she always says that there is 
uh, in the dark ages, you know, when the dark ages were going to the middle ages, about 6% of the world was able to read and write. The literacy rates were 6%. Today, the number of people who can program is about 1%, uh, if, we, if you are generous. Uh, and the number of people who can, who, who can build you an AI application is probably less than 2 million. 2 million out of 8 billion people in the world. And the number of people who could explain to you, you know, technically how chat GPT works is probably 25, 30,000. That's it. Uh, so this number needs to be 100x, 1,000x higher. And I think that's, for India, for us, that is the huge opportunity, um, is to be able to not just create users of this technology, but builders of this technology, uh, who are able to, and that removes the fear of it, you know, that removes the, the mystery around it. And the more that we understand it, the more we are able to do something with it, and uh, we shed the fear of it. Right. Uh, so, Vishal, this whole fear and, you know, uh, sort of uh, uh, statements that we keep reading that uh, AI will take jobs and uh, do those kind of stuff, uh, you believe that that's uh, highly misplaced? <laughs> it is. Well, if people stay, sit still and don't learn and don't um, understand how these technologies can improve the work that they do, then for sure it will take those jobs. Um, but if people start to use these technologies to improve their productivity and do new things with it and do things better with it, um, then this will be a great productivity enhancer, a great amplifier of our abilities. So it is just a, uh, it is up to us, you know. Um, Eric Clapton had this beautiful song, it's in the way that you use it. Um, and it is uh, how we use these technologies that is going to make um, a, a, a big difference. Right. Uh, Rajan, you are obviously, I mean, technology is very critical for your business as well. And we have seen, I mean, obviously the early indications are that 5G is going to revolutionize a lot of things. Uh, but then there is metaverse and obviously AI. But I will restrict my question to uh, currently 5G and going forward uh, metaverse maybe. Its impact on retail, the way we use services, the way we consume data, the way we consume entertainment. Uh, how do you see that changing going forward? You know, uh, one point I want to pick up what Vishal said. Every technology will bring disruption. Some jobs will be lost. We should be cognizant of that and we should be ready for that. But if you really see the landscape over, let's say, 20 years, there are so many other jobs that the technology creates. So we have to adopt that. There are more jobs to be created with any new technology that comes in than the jobs lost. Having said that, on 5G, I think India is rolling out probably this is the largest rollout the world would have ever seen. And I think for a country like India, with the connectivity is most important. And more sober uh, in the hinterlands. And that's what we are wanting to do that now. The services, as the consumption story of India really rises. And India being in its, I have to say, a sweet spot of uh, the way economic uh, velocity that India is shaping up with, it's important that we connect the urban and the rural digital divide that has been there for a while. All these services that we are seeing today, be it e-commerce, be it OTTs, be it social media, honestly when I travel around India, it amazes me the kind of the younger generation that is taking to all these services which has never heard about it. It used to be an urban phenomena, so to speak. Today you go to the tier three, tier four rural areas. I mean, it's, it's so all pervasive. Not only that is helping all the services to connect with all the manufacturing side on one side, it's also the financial services. People are unbanked in a country like India and banks will never be able to reach out. Digital mobiles, the, the, the UPI system, the payment bank system, we are connecting the whole ecosystem. So 5G will play its own uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, way that we connect the country on one side. On the other side is the industrial needs of the 5G. Huge automation, real-time work. Today when you go to the new factories that are being set up, they are being set up with all the, uh, you know, uh, with the backdrop of the technology. Where lesser people are involved, more machine work is involved, which needs real-time uh, connectivity, and that's what 5G will provide. Right. <clears throat> right. Uh, Vishal, uh, you know, in this context, uh, because a lot of these, uh, you know, uh, the industries which are 
dependent on uh, consumer behavior they also have to go through a lot of data crunching lot of analysis uh, and obviously i mean some sort of basic coding and all to what extent going forward uh, ai will replace uh, some of these uh, mundane tasks the uh, the state of it today is that um, so if you look at gpt4 or even gpt3.5 or or the models from google uh, these models do a surprisingly good job of software development um, but they, it is being used so far to enhance the productivity of an individual software developer um, and so what you need even though it does a very good job it is uh, it often you know makes mistakes and so you need someone supervising what it is doing so if you imagine a situation where you have a software developer plus this ai tool using their work um uh, what is a a couple of software developers or a team of software developers you start to see significant productivity improvement so what you will see and what you are already starting to see is for example there is a product from microsoft called copilot and there are several other similar products out there that are significantly enhancing the the productivity of a software programmer today as soon you will see this applying to teams of software programmers and so uh, as mr mitra was saying the uh, uh, similar to how we use uh, other kinds of tools it becomes it behooves us to start to use this technology to make our teams much more productive able to do better programming because you know this ai tool is not only helping you write code it actually has access to all the code that has ever been basically been written um uh, that it can bring to bear on whatever it is that you are trying to do so that's a very powerful ability um and um so yeah i do see that impacting software development in a very significant way and the teams the people the organizations that embrace that are going to benefit from it the ones that don't are clearly going to see uh, a significant disruption from it right uh so vishal can you just uh, elaborate a bit on this uh i mean obviously tech companies are going to be at the forefront in terms of uh, the usage and application of ai but apart from that eventually which are the sectors and in industries uh, where you see maximum impact uh, or i would say maximum usage of ai um within company so companies that do a lot more knowledge oriented work a lot more um informational work um whether it is um services companies software development companies um companies that work on knowledge process outsourcing bpo or just companies that work with a lot of informational tasks you know um text and things like this as opposed to for example companies that build that manufacture things and and, and so on uh so one level of applications that we see is in helping improve the operations of every company whether it is financial operations hr you know uh, supply chain operations and and things of this nature so the operational tasks the b tasks as engelbart would have said um but also in the uh, companies in the services world it impacts the very products themselves so their the nature of the work done by the core employees uh, also gets impacted by um impacted by this so there you will see more impact from this already we see for example in analysis tasks business analysts and the work that is done to analyze opportunities to do product research um things of this nature these are already being uh, ai based applications uh, this language model based applications are already being applied to that um uh, some other areas that are very interesting are for example in in pharmaceutical uh, world uh, understanding chemical compositions understanding molecules or doing uh, genomic um, data analysis sequencing prediction these are also in a sense informational tasks and uh, these are also uh, i serve on the board of gsk and, and we are doing a lot of work uh, in this regard where um, genomic data can be analyzed using large language models that are specifically trained on understanding these sequences or discovery of new compounds new molecules that is aided by this uh so any company that whose primary work uh is informational in nature uh can stand to dramatically benefit from it or be disrupted by it depending on how what what attitude they take to this to this technology and every other company in their operations already can start to apply this right uh while we have discussed a lot about future let, let's talk about the present 
uh, Rajan, you must have seen the recent GDP data and uh, I mean obviously uh, there was a report also by a famous uh, firm just a couple of days back. All of them are hoping uh, and even the data indicates that India is in a good place in terms of its growth uh, trajectory. Uh, looking at the macro indicators, uh, what is your outlook? Um, you know, I saw the last uh, data of the last quarter. Uh, sure enough, India is growing as, as I see around the world. Uh, as I said uh, before as well, that India is at a sweet spot. Growing 6% to 7%, I mean, that's kind of the data line that we are seeing. Uh, if we have to grow for a faster pace, which we should be growing with the kind of uh, population that we have, India needs to grow 8 to 10% in the coming few years. And for that, the facilitation of the government side, I can tell you from a business point of view, uh, is extremely important the way government is coming around to helping the sectors that are defining how the growth will happen. We are seeing manufacturing, which has been a laggard for many, many years. This government has taken upon themselves to bring manufacturing to the forefront. At 17% of the GDP on a manufacturing moving to 25% is, 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 is a needle which has to move. But the work has already started. The entire PLI scheme that we see, entire Atman uh, Nibir we are seeing, this will propel the growth on manufacturing. Services is already is at 58 to 60 percent, depending how we see the data, is also growing, but manufacturing needs to keep that pace. India will grow. There is no doubt about that. And I, I can tell you, we've seen the numbers which the reports uh, have alluded to it, not only in, the, in terms of the top line, but also on the consumption side, because both have to play in tandem. Last three years have been a challenging year for the entire globe, including India. It's a black swan event. But I think India has emerged very strongly out of that. If you see now the data of the last two years and the last few quarters, is clearly showing that India is on a growth path, which, which means really the world is looking at India in a very different way. India has become a trusted partner. India has become a trusted source. And we are seeing global changes that are taking shape. Uh, geopolitics has its own uh, way to play and I think it is very important for India to take that I would say pole position today that we have been actually put through into that. And the decisive government that we have today in place, the decisive leadership that we have in place and the policies that we in place, I am in no doubt that the growth story, the growth trajectory of India will remain very robust. Uh, Vishal, uh, would you like to add what is your outlook? It is one of the shining spots right now in the world. You know, you look around, there is all this doom and gloom everywhere, except in, in India. And so, you know, in a sense, there is such a positive feeling, uh, spirit, uh, and, and incredible work that is happening from uh, across the board in all sectors. This the sort of the spirit of entrepreneurship and uh, a can-do attitude. It is incredibly... Uh, impressive and infectious, uh, you know. So, I think in a, in a way, when I look at the the future, uh, I see that you know, um, in a world that is going to be transformed by AI, by these technologies, uh, India can play such a fundamental role not only for India itself but for the entire world. And I think we need to unleash our our innovative spirit and uh, uh, solve the big problems that are out there. It is right now our canvas, ours to build on. Right. Very quickly, Vishal, uh, last question to you. Uh, like Rajan also mentioned, you know, uh, we need to eventually get to growth rate of maybe 8 to 10 percent, uh, looking at the kind of population and looking at the kind of working population that we have. Now, how we can effectively leverage, uh, let's say, technologies like AI, generate enough jobs, educate people about it, and again, sort of emerge as a leader the way we did back in the day uh, in software industry? The, uh, by, by training, by education, having a tremendous focus on, on that, you know, we have to always look at the, um, the number of people who can use the technology, the number of people who can uh, build with this technology, the number of people who can actually build the next generations of chat GPT and GPT-4 and what have you. Um, the more that we can enable these uh, th these numbers, and we have massive numbers, you know, we, have a, we are a young country. Uh, so I see that the enablement of the skills and the training as one of the fundamental needs and, uh, and opportunities. 
and and then the the creation of the jobs and all of this will will follow from there the world is looking for um for, you know for technology like this one thing that i feel particularly good about is that a number of the the number of global products that are coming out of india has increased significantly in the last few years it used to be that we you know we were more we provided services to others and so forth but now we are building innovative products which are global in nature and i think this needs to be really multiplied and and uh, and encouraged uh, even even more um, and so the the way it works is you know steve jobs always said you connect the dots looking backwards uh, the uh, the the employment the prosperity are all consequences of the fact that you have such, such a workforce that is able to innovate like that and then you know the growth rates and and all of these things follow from there but you have to um put the the horse in front of the cart and uh, that is the skilled um, people who are skilled in next generations of capabilities right uh, mr mithal last question to you uh, like you mentioned eventually we need to get to 8 to 10% growth uh it's a desirable uh, situation to have but not very easy to achieve uh, and considering that we'll be getting into uh, the general elections next year uh, so i mean what are those two three steps that we immediately need to sort of take in terms of reforms which can kick start uh, and sustain the investment cycle and the jobs market you know i think uh, from global headwinds as we see there are some challenges which will remain on the table uh, till the time the entire geopolitics is settled which will take its own time because we are seeing europe is challenged uk is challenged us is growing uh the chinese have their own play uh india is growing at a speed that is little probably slower but we are moving in that direction and i don't think so elections will have any impact as least i see from the industry point of view this government i've seen works till the last day and there is no reason for not them not to and the reforms i can tell you have been uh, uh, from all sectors this government is very friendly we see the fti policies which are very friendly i don't think so there's any other country that today we'll see which has the growth that we are seeing the consumption of the society that we will find of the uh, generation that we have on the young uh, young generation that india has so we have this the story quite built up there the uh, manufacturing piece has to kick in i think that's important and we are already on that direction so clearly i don't think so that as we speak of this growth as uh, in the coming time india is very much ready uh, from reform side from policy side from decision making side entrepreneurs entrepreneurs are investing some private capex investment is little slow but i think we are seeing it's inching as we see the last report government has invested a lot uh, the in the private sector will also now started kicking in i think we're all set there for a growth which should be far exceeding in the coming years absolutely let's hope for the best uh mr mithal thank you so much for joining thank us you. and vishal uh, thank you so much for joining us from there thank you thank you